Hello and welcome to episode 45 of Bloggers Are Weird. I'm your host, DJ Paris, from the blog ThoughtsFromParis.com, and happy 2016. This is the first show of the year, and I have another show already recorded that will be coming shortly. If this is your first time listening to Bloggers Are Weird, let me tell you what we do. So I'm a blogger in the humor space, and I have befriended over the years and continue to befriend other writers, bloggers, who I admire and who I want to talk to. And I want to also introduce their audience oftentimes to what they sound like because bloggers oftentimes are just writers, right? They're not necessarily all doing video or audio. So I had a thought years ago where I would say, you know, I bet... Uh, someone's audience would love to hear them read one of their stories. So we do that and then we interview them and try to find out where they come from. How did they become successful? How did they get their ideas? Where? What tips do they have for new writers? And I think it's just a lot of fun too. Today, oh, and a couple other things. First of all, I have in my own writing, I have a pretty exciting thing that I'm doing, but my first article for In the Powder Room, which is traditionally a uh, women's humor website, and they were nice enough to allow me to uh, start writing for them, um, and we'll see how often I'm able to do that and how often they'll have me, but my first ish, my first article goes live. It's either late January, early February, so I'll keep you abreast of that. I'm also <laughs> helping my girlfriend uh, start a YouTube show, so she is a, a pastry chef, uh, although with a corporate job in the in the food service world, but also she is a former Cupcake Wars winner on television and has done a million other TV things. So she decided to start a cooking channel, which I help film and produce. So that show you can find on YouTube at Walloping Teaspoon. So just search for that or go to wallopingteaspoon.com. Today on the show, we have Stephanie Geese, who is the author and blogger of binkiesandbriefcases.com. And Huffington Post named her one of the most viral bloggers of the decade. And she also is the founder of Blog U, which is Blog University, a three-day blog conference in, held in, in Baltimore, Maryland. So we're going to talk about the upcoming conference this June and also her a story where she started and how she got to the level of success that she has. And also she now consults other bloggers and helps them, you know, to improve their blog in, in a number of different ways. So now that we're in 2016 and trying to keep our New Year's resolutions, which for most of us is to stop eating as much, grab a handful of rice cakes, or whatever your drug of choice is. Mine is also a handful of rice cakes. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Bloggers Are Weird is sponsored by moreblogreaders.com. Moreblogreaders.com is the home for the greatest teacher of how to build a business and get more readers for your blog, Darren Rouse. If you aren't familiar with Darren, you need to be because over 320,000 bloggers get his newsletters. He has over 7,000 articles on his website. He's written tons of books. In fact, when you go to moreblogreaders.com, you will see a list of Darren's books. I highly encourage you to start with 31 Days to a Better Blog. By going to moreblogreaders.com, you'll get special pricing for being a bloggers, our weird listener. So are you ready for more traffic and more success with your blog? Then go to moreblogreaders.com. A family trip to Ikea in 10 easy steps. My husband and I like to think of ourselves as Ikea experts. After all, we did survive installing an Ikea kitchen without killing each other. As far as I know, that is the only requirement for expert status. Yesterday, we decided on a whim to take a day trip with the entire family. Ha ha ha, you just revoked our expert status in your mind, didn't you? But we were confident, perhaps overconfident, and we did survive. So there's that. It's all about survival. And in the name of survival, I present to you this list of how to get through your family trip to Ikea in 10 easy steps. Number one. On a Sunday afternoon, suggest to your husband that you use his Christmas bonus to order very expensive furniture from a different store because your children are still sleeping on mattresses on the floor, and wouldn't it be nice if they had actual beds? He will suggest just getting their beds from Ikea because then you can... 
Get both of your daughters new beds for less than the price of one bed at the other store. Fine, he will say. Let's go right now. He will feel like he has to go along with this plan because it was technically his idea. Bonus points if this is a football Sunday and his favorite team is playing. He will love that. Number two, load all of your children in a pickup truck, squishing three car seats in the back seat. Drive to a different state because there's no Ikea store anywhere near your house. Along the way, stop for gas, stop to put air in the tires, stop to take your kids to the bathroom. Threaten to stop some more if they don't knock it off right now. Number three, finally get to the store. Be thankful there's family parking. Divide and conquer. Have your husband go to customer service to return an extra cabinet from your kitchen remodel while you go to the small land area and pray very, very hard that there are three open spots available on this busy weekend afternoon and they can take all of your kids for an hour. Your three-year-old tells you she has to go potty. Don't take her because there are already five more families in line behind you and you don't want to lose your spot. Tell her older sister to take her to the potty behind the green door as soon as they get inside. Wait in line and fill out the permission slip. Miraculously, three other children are leaving just as you arrive, and the yellow and blue referees will take all of your kids. You are the only person who can sign them back out. Yeah, yeah, fine. Number four, meet back up with your husband. Find out that he got store credit for the cabinet. Awesome. That will pay for half of one of the beds or a new bookshelf. Now you need a new bookshelf. Check the list you made before you left the house. You are on a mission, a mission for beds, bookshelves, and picture frames. Oh, and one of those plastic things to put under the desk chair in your office to protect the carpet if they have it. They do have it. Of course they have it. They have everything. Number five, walk around the store as quickly as possible. The countdown until you have to get the kids out of small land is on. Have your husband take pictures on his phone of the items you want and their little tags so you can remember later what you actually wanted and which aisle it is in down in the basement warehouse. Number six, want everything except that. What is that? That's hideous. Number seven, make it through the store. Whew. 20 minutes to spare. Warehouse time. Grab two flat carts, one for you and one for your husband, and be transported into the futuristic world for Maze Runner. Only there are no biomechanical scorpions, just more flat-packed furniture than one could ever imagine. Refer to phone pictures from earlier and find what you need. Head to checkout and pay. Number eight. Three minutes until small land. Time is over. Help your husband drive the flat carts out to the truck, then leave him by himself to load everything while you go inside to pick up the kids. Get a bad report from the associate working the ball pit. Your son lost his glasses and they had to evacuate the entire pit, but they found them again. Also, your youngest kept screaming the phrase, I don't like balls in my face. Well, who does, you think, as you half-heartedly apologize to the teenager you will never see again? And of course they were awful. They just drove forever from another state to get to the mecca of overstimulation. Why do you think I pawned them off on you? You smile and wave as you leave. Number nine, everything is loaded in the truck. Your husband needs to stop in another gas station and run inside for Advil. He has a headache. Afterwards, you begin the long drive home. You ask if he checked the weather forecast before you left. He did, and there was no chance of rain today, so he didn't bother bringing a tarp. The weather forecast was wrong. The clouds are looking ominous. You were on the highway with several hundred dollars worth of brand new furniture wrapped in cardboard in the back of an open pickup truck when the heavens open. There's nothing you can do about it now. You just sigh and say you're glad you didn't decide to buy a sofa today. Number 10. You finally make it home and help unload all of the soaking wet boxes into the garage. You unpack the items inside. Thankfully, everything seems to be fine. Then you realize you still have to put all of this crap together. It's funny because it's true. Everything in this post actually happened to us yesterday. Guess what we're doing today? Where's my drill? Uh, Stephanie Geese is a mom of three, the blogger behind binkiesandbriefcases.com, and the founder of Blog U Conference. She has been named one of the most viral bloggers of the decade by the Huffington Post. It's quite an accomplishment. Uh, won a 2015 Blog Her Voice of the Year Award, another huge accomplishment, accomplishment in the impact category, and is one of the co-authors of the New York Times bestselling Humor anthology by a friend of both of ours, Jen Mann, I Just Want to Pee Alone. 
and she's appeared on Good Morning America, uh, Glenn Beck, and and the uh, and now this in my podcast, um, the least uh, exciting of, of those three. But still, we are I'm honored that you took a few moments um, out of your New Year's weekend to uh, to to spend here talking about. Uh, yourself and blog you. And so thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. <laughs> well, I'm not as um, subversive as a Glenn Beck, so I, <laughs> I won't have any really strong political opinions uh, because I'm just quite frankly, I, here's my, this is the, the, I feel like I, like I said, I, I, I try to stay uh, in touch with what's going on. Um, so I can feel at least in a social situation, like I could have a conversation about politics. Yeah. So every week, and I've done this for probably 10, no more than that, probably 15 years as I watch, um, I watch uh, meet the press on Sunday mornings and I do it because I go, well, you know, they have kind of like the best guests mm -hmm. and even not, now we're coming down to the election and I'm still like, I, I really don't know. I don't know who's like, who, <laughs> you know, and so it's so funny. Um, somebody like a Glenn Beck, who's so decisive and he has a very strong point of view and like it or, or not it's he knows what he likes and i'm still just like i have no idea so um this show we will not be getting yeah. uh, unless you want to talk politics i i will probably uh, not okay. have much to say yeah no that's okay we can steer clear of that area it's just fine <laughs> by me it's a minefield yeah. anyway and I, I i don't want to you know i upset people enough just being me <laughs> um but let's talk about you so um first of all um Let's, I always like people's origin story. So, you know, you've now been, you know, in, in books and, mm -hmm. and on television as well as, you know, uh, Huffington Post named you most viral blogger or one of the most viral bloggers of the decade. Um, you know, let's talk about where you started and when did you start? Um, I started in 2010, very early in 2010 blogging. Um, but before that, I we had a small family blog where we would just kind of post pictures of the kids to share with the grandparents that my husband ran mostly on WordPress. And then we kind of got thrown into the world of parenthood. We adopted our son out of foster care when he was a toddler. And very shortly before we went to court and made his adoption official, we found out that I was pregnant with um, our middle daughter. And then he was able to get a job transfer at the time we were living in Florida, about a thousand miles away from our family. And he was able to get a job transfer back to the Pennsylvania area, which is much closer to where our family lives. And so we took that. And now I was in a new state and I had two very young children and I didn't know anybody. And it was just and I, before that, had been an elementary school teacher, and so I was transitioning to be a, being a stay-at-home mom and being in a new state and just being a mom, not only for the first time, but being an adoptive mom for the first time and being the mom of a toddler for the first time and a mom of an infant for the first time and all of this kind of all at once. And it was a really lonely experience because my husband was the only person I knew, and he needed to go to work most of the time. And so I kind of found a lot of solace in reading blogs, especially blogs that were written by moms who were in the same stage of life that I was in. And so I would spend like all of nap times and in the evenings just kind of pouring into these blogs and reading their stories. And I remember being so grateful to them for being willing to share about their lives and just being so open and honest. And Eventually, my husband encouraged me to start a blog of my own. And so um, in January of 2010, Binkies and Briefcases was kind of born as almost a New Year's resolution, I guess, just kind of I wanted to have that for myself. And I was like, I'm going to start this this year and I'm really going to follow through with it. And here I am six years later still doing it. So I guess that's one New Year's resolution I kept. <laughs> right. Well, and, and I'm sure immediately you had wild success within your first month and hundreds of thousands of views and all of that or or did it yeah. did it take longer no not so much it took about five years maybe four and a half five years before the pages kind of really started to pick up um yeah it, it took a while but it took a lot of consistent effort and posting but I wasn't really doing it for that at the time I was doing it mostly for the connection to other people which is really how blog you was born too it's mostly about finding connections to other bloggers 
Well, that you know, that's a that's a good segue. So let's talk about Blog U because mm-hmm. probably there's people listening who probably have never heard of it and should hear, hear about it. So tell us, uh, tell us what that is. Blog U is the conference that I am the founder of. Um, which basically I just kind of do all the business aspect of it in my name. But we started it as a group of women who everybody always talks about finding your tribe, finding your niche in kind of our, you know, blog area. That's just an expression that comes up a lot. And I was able to do that. Anna Luther, who writes a blog called My Life and Kids, kind of took me under her wing. She was one of those bloggers that I had followed for a long time when I was in kind of that lonely stage of my life. And I would participate. She had a link link up party called Finding the Funny at the time. And I would link up to that a lot. And I won a few times one of the most clicked on pieces of the week on their Finding the Funny with um, Anna and Kelly Nettles. Um, had it together. And Kelly um, writes a blog called Kelly's Break Room, and they kind of hosted this linky party together. And so I would participate in that. And sometimes I would win one of the most clicked on things of the week. And eventually Anna had the idea to kind of bring me in under her wing. And at the time, I think my blog had like maybe a hundred followers or something. So she was in a network with a lot of much larger bloggers. Um, But she just kind of brought me in and they didn't really care who had how many page views at the time. It was just a very open network of support and helping each other answer questions And, um, we were in that group together for several years and eventually we just, I started going to blog conferences as my blog grew. And every time I would go to a conference, I would leave thinking, you know, that was fun. But honestly, I learned more from that group that Anna started than I have at any of these conferences that I've gone to. And so eventually I went back to those women and I said, you know what, I think we should start our own conference because I don't think we're giving ourselves enough credit. I really think that we know more than we think we do because I didn't learn anything new when I went to any of these conferences. And um, so that's how BlogU was born, really. We just kind of all got together and we said, well, can we do this? Can we be the speakers? Like, will people come to pay us? And pay to hear us speak and they did and that's what happened we're going into our third year now so it's expanding a lot um but it was really just all about taking that core network of women and kind of elevating everyone the whole philosophy of when the water rises all boats rise you know that old quote um so we believe strongly in that philosophy and there's no such thing as success without you know your network around you yeah i think i think you're right. i know you're right because i have been to many blog conferences myself and also to blog you and one of there's a few things and i was thinking about this earlier today about why um, i really enjoyed the blog you experience last year and so i missed it the first year but i was there uh this past year um i'll be uh be there again um this this year um and, uh, you know, I go to, I try to go to everything myself because mm-hmm. my friends go to most everything and not everyone goes to everything, but I have the ability as somebody who doesn't have children. And, mm-hmm. um, I have some freedom in, in my profession where I'm able to, to get, to get to places and I go to most everything. And so I'm pretty critical about blog conferences yeah. in, in not in a cynical way, but I, I, I see a lot of room for improvement in, in certain ones. And a lot of times, like you said, I've, and uh, I won't mention in any names, but I've, I've been places and I've gone away from the weekend going, you know, aside from seeing my friends, which mm-hmm. I love to do, but that was a very expensive way to just see my friends because I didn't learn a whole lot. Yeah. And, and I sat in a lot of, you know, uh, sessions where I thought I was going to learn something. I know that the speaker probably did know a lot, but maybe it wasn't presented that well or, or whatever. And, and I've really just kind of gotten, got soured on them. Um, a little bit. I, I mean, I still go, but I don't expect much content wise. And when, when I went to blog you last year, I was so impressed because 
uh, from the sessions I attended, and I wish I could have attended more, um, but uh, I was like, wow, I actually learned really important stuff. And and I'm a tough audience because, yeah. I, I mean, I'm not easy to win over. And I was I really was so impressed with the selection you guys had made with, with at least the people I saw. And then, you know, the the fact that it was, uh, you know, smaller in nature, I think, enabled the second point, which is the community aspect to really uh, be so, so obvious as, as, you know, you, you know, you, you were there, you, you're there with huge name bloggers and people who were just starting and everyone is in a small, intimate environment. And I, I didn't get the sense of any sort of clicks or those are the cool kids and these aren't. And you do get that sometimes yeah. at other blog conferences. So, um, talk a little bit more if you can about the vision of, of what you, what experience you wanted or you want people to have when they come to blog you. Well, I think you covered a lot of it actually, but we did make those decisions consciously. Um, because I was a teacher, the education has been my top priority from the beginning and it's something that we focus on very heavily. So we're not, you know, trying to find huge name celebrities and think about who will be the biggest draw. We very carefully consider what people are going to learn and what they're going to take away. And what you just said about, you know, people come to us all the time afterwards and they say, I was really surprised how much I learned. Um, That's feedback that I get frequently. Um, but we also wanted to just have that sense of community and we wanted to make it an experience where, um, I would go to a lot of other blog conferences and I remember buying a ticket to one blog conference specifically because I wanted to meet a blogger who I had been following for a while and she was going to be the keynote speaker. And so I went and, um, I saw her give her keynote and I had brought a book with me that she had written that I really wanted to have her sign. And there just wasn't a spot in the schedule for that um, at all. And so I wound up like tweeting her and we're like direct messaging, trying to find a place to meet where she can sign this book. And then I wound up just like meeting her in a hallway. And then once other people saw me doing that, like a line formed behind me of other people (laughs) who had also brought her book to have her sign. Um, And it just kind of clicked like this needs to be a time that's built into conferences. And so at BlogU, we do something called office hours where in addition to all of the sessions, we stop sessions um, kind of in the early evening before dinner time on Saturday. And we set aside an hour where there's no sessions going on. And we do something called office hours where all of our speakers come and they're just available for anyone who's attending the conference to come and meet. Um, we had had cupcakes for the past few years set out. So people just kind of are able to mingle, ask questions. We've had speakers sit down and do one-on-one consultations at that point um, to help answer questions. You know, they'll get talking about something and they'll just be like, Hey, do you have your laptop with you? I can help you with that right now. That's not unusual at all for speakers to spend, you know, up to the entire hour helping someone who's talking with them. Um, and then other people are just kind of coming up and joining into the conversation. And that's something that you really never see at other conferences. And now it's something that I get a little irritated when I go to yeah. other conferences and I'm like, but where are the office hours? Like I miss that when I go to other conferences now because it has become an important part of our experience to just, like you said, not make it clicky, not make it like, Oh, these people are above you somehow. And um, we want, and the speakers like it too, because they like connecting with the people who are reading their blogs and getting that feedback. Um, So it's really fun. Um, And also all of our social events are for everyone. There's no such thing at BlogU about like having to get invited to one of the parties (laughs) and all of that business. So if you have a ticket to BlogU, um, well, first of all, our tickets are all inclusive, which is probably the most unique aspect of our conference. So if you buy... Um, a double room ticket or a single room ticket to blog you, you literally don't have to take out your wallet the entire time. Once you get on campus, we hold it on a college campus, which again, going along with our educational theme. And then your meals are included. We lodge you in a dorm room for two nights. So you don't have the additional expense of a hotel. 
um, everything is just included. The meals, the room, the social events, everything. So I think. Yeah, it, it um, I'm sorry. Yeah, I no. just wanted to, to point out there was one thing that, that um, it was something that I noticed as somebody who was at Bloggy last year um, that I realized I'd never seen at a blog conference before, which I thought was so uh, subtle and simple. But I, I would, uh, I would, I'm amazed other f- conferences don't do this, and I think you're so. Uh, it's such a smart thing to do um, is that when people walked in and so I was a speaker obviously last year at, at, at blog you, I was going to go anyway as an attendee. So um, I would have had this experience even as an attendee, but as a speaker um, and I don't know that you had all the speakers do this, but um, I know that one of my responsibilities aside from giving present, giving my talk and also doing the office hours, which was also awesome. And that, that's, that absolutely 100% agree um, is, is wonderful. And, and it also, you know what I love about office hours real quickly is it enabled me to be able to move the conversation along when somebody in my session, when I talked on podcasting, um, had, uh, a, a very specific question that would have kind of, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have made a lot of sense to stop right there and answer a super technical question that didn't apply to 95% of the people in the room. Right. It was a great out yeah. <laughs> where I could say, I would say, well, well, you know, yeah. come see me at the office hours and I'll answer that. And it was, it was, it was great because it got that person to relax and, and let go of that question and then gave them an opportunity to still get it answered. Yeah. But it also, you know, where I don't lose 95% of the audience who doesn't care. Um, uh, but, but back to, um, the the thing I think that you guys did that, and I hope you you continue to do it, which was another responsibility that at least I know w- was asked of me, was that when at the registration that uh, staff was there mm-hmm. to greet people as they came in and actually talk to them yep. and make sure they knew what was going on and also just you know just to socialize. And I don't I'm, I'm I was like thinking about this like I don't feel like any other blog conference does that, and it's so important because everybody's afraid when they walk in or if you're, I mean, I don't know, at least I am. And I, you know, I was supposed to be there, but even me, I was like, you know, nobody comes up and talks to, you know, most people. I mean, at least everyone's like, unless you know, 25 people there, um, it's scary. And so I love the fact that as soon as I walked in and I don't think, you know, whoever came up to me probably didn't even know I was a speaker and said, Oh, you know, who are you? And what do you, and I was like, this is great. And this is before I even got to the registration table. Yeah. So I love that. Was that intentional? It is intentional. Um, I know sometimes when I would go, I'm very um, introverted naturally. And so a lot of times when I would go to other blog conferences, and so Blog You was born kind of of me going to other blog conferences and having not negative experiences, but just sometimes uncomfortable experiences because of my own personality. And I would see people that I hadn't, that I'd been following for years, but I didn't really have the nerve to kind of go up and introduce myself and talk to them. And I'm sure they would have loved to hear, Oh my gosh, I've been following you for years and I uh, love yes, you so they much. <laughs> but like, I was just kind of almost starstruck, I guess. Um, yeah. My mom went with me once to a blog conference and she was like, why don't you just go talk to that girl? Like, don't you follow her? And I was like, I can't talk to her. She She's might, somebody she might yell at me. Yeah, like, um, but yeah, so it was born out of that. So we have a lot of our speakers and our staff is all made up of bloggers, a lot of whom also have large followings and just kind of volunteer to be on our on-site staff helping. And they, you know, are coming up to you instead. So you don't have to be in that uncomfortable position. So we get a lot of feedback saying that we are one of the most comfortable places for introverts because we do keep it small on purpose. Um, We like to keep our attendee numbers under 250. And we do that purposefully um, so that we have the intimate environment and we can build that sense of community yeah, I, I think that's that's so important. And so, you know, you were talking about Anna Luther earlier uh, as somebody who was a mentor mm-hmm. and, uh, to you uh, early on, and she was the one of the first people to come up to me at at uh, when I arrived, and um, and I I really didn't. I mean, I I knew you a, a little bit, mm-hmm. but certainly never met in person. And um, I mean, I'm trying to think if there was anybody there when I walked in that I knew. I don't I don't think there was. And um, but anyway, I uh, 
I mean, I, I knew a few names, but not, not really. And she came over and I didn't know Anna Luther. And within two minutes, you know, she came up and hi, how are you? And who are you? And what do you do? And we, we found out that we went to college together, although she's younger. Um, she lived in the same house, which is an amazing coincidence as my sister and not a sorority house, literally just a, a house that, in, you know, eight girls lived in. And um, that is an amazing coincidence. And that they, she was also in my sister's sorority and also the president. My sister was also the president like a few, a few years before her. So and she knew my sister and, and a few. So it, it was, you know, it's like, oh, that's Crazy. so cool. And yeah. I, I would probably not have gone up to her um, on my own. Um you know, just because for whatever, I mean, I pr- probably would have met her at some point in the weekend, but she came up to me immediately and said that. And then other pe- other people were doing that too. And I thought that is so cool because I, I know from talking to other bloggers that have gone to other conferences where they don't do that, that it can be a very lonely experience if you're uh, shy or if you are somebody who is, you know, not as extroverted um, or for whatever reason, just you don't know anybody there. Yeah. And so I think that anything like you were saying, the the uh, creating relationships and intimacy and doing that in small in the smaller groups, I think f- more f- facilitates that kind of environment. But also you guys have very intentionally create situations where everyone can kind of participate. And um, and and I, th- I like that. I think that's very I think that's very wise because. Uh, I know a ton, and I'm sure you do too, of people who have gone to other conferences come back and go, eh, I didn't really, I felt overwhelmed. Yeah, and- absolutely. I do. And I know once I went to a conference and <laughs> I ate literally every meal, like I just had room service deliver it to me <laughs> in my hotel room because sure. I was like, well, I don't want to go down and eat. I don't know anybody else here and I don't really want to go down and eat. And I didn't really need to do any networking because I already had the contact information for most of the brands that were there. And I was just like, well, I'm just going to hang out in my room and eat here. But at blog you, we do all of the meals, um, in the cafeteria style on a college campus. And we're coming to you. Like if I see you sitting by yourself, I'm coming to you and I'm sitting with you and we just kind of won't let that happen. It's just not, organically that wouldn't happen at blog you because it's just kind of not an option there was a at one of the meals i was at a little round table and a she had to have been like 19 or 20 a 20 year old uh she a woman who she went to college i forget where but she she made i can't exactly remember her story but she was in college and i think i don't know if she had a like I don't know how maybe somebody sent her as a gift or, or something anyway. And I thought, Oh my gosh. And she literally knew nobody. And she even told me, she says, I just started blogging a month ago. I don't know anyone. And you, I couldn't imagine how scary that would be in, in just an, in a normal environment. And then, and then, you know, I could just tell that she was like, wow, everyone's so friendly here. And, you know, and I was like, that is a, that is a nice um, little testimonial yeah. because I know like a 20 year old girl, you know, should be scared going uh-huh. on her own to a, a, a conference. And she was, you could tell she was feeling really at home. And awesome. um, I, I think you guys, yeah, I think you guys really went the, yeah, I think very purposefully try to make in, in the parties were all very, very fun um, and inclusive, mm-hmm. you know, and, uh, and yeah, it was, it was very cool. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, uh, to, to continue to support you guys in whatever way that is. Um, so, so let's talk, let's go back to your blogging because okay. you do have this, um, very successful, uh, story and, and let's go back to, so, and by the way, when, when is blog you this year? Blog you is June 10th through 12th at the university of Maryland this year. We're switching to a new location, just kind of expanding. Um, we're moving from my alma mater to my husband's alma mater, but so still mm-hmm. kind of keeping it in the family, but we are switching locations and, um, heading a little bit to towards the DC area. We wanted to pick a location that was a little bit easier for people to access via public transportation. So yeah, that's uh, that's that's cool. I, I I I'm excited for the for this the switch. Although I did love that uh, Notre Dame University yeah. is was super cool. Um, that's a what a what a pretty place to go to school. It was but, uh, yeah, it was awesome to go to school. No Dame, <laughs> it was fun. But say la vie. 
Yeah. Well, it, not the easiest to get to though, yeah. for sure. So that's, that's, uh, but so that, that's, that's probably a, a nice move. Um, and I think it's also fun that you get to stay in a dorm. I think yeah. it's, I haven't stayed, I didn't, I thought I haven't slept in a dorm since my beginning of my sophomore year of college. So that was a long time ago. So, uh, I think that's super cool. And, and though, and, and I know there's other people too that, uh, I imagine there's got to be a lodging nearby too. If you don't want to stay in a dorm, you know, I know people, I, I assume yeah. people can still choose not to. They can. So. Yeah. We do have commuter tickets and some people choose hotel rooms, but I love the dorm room and it does allow us to do really cool things at night in the dorms, um, like our, our open mic night. I don't know if you were there for that, yeah. um, but that happened organically our first year. Um, after we did some readings at our Friday night event, we went back to the dorms and our attendees just kind of didn't want the night to be over. And so they started their own open mic night in the dorms and, um, the group of us who had started the conference, literally, we're just like sobbing, like, this is what we wanted. And we just kind of like left them on their own to do that. But that was a tradition we wanted to continue. So that still happens in the dorm rooms now. Yeah, I, I did. I sat, I sat in and listened for about an hour and basically uh, you can, I think you put your name in a fishbowl and Mm -hmm. you basically get selected or, or I think that's how it worked or yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And people got up and there's a microphone and you know, you could, you could tell your, tell your story. And, um, that that was very cool. It was neat. And and you're, you're right. There were some very, um, you know, poignant moments, uh, some, in some people's stories and then other ones are funny and, It was it was very cool because everyone had a voice yeah. um, and you could express it and yeah so very very cool okay let's get back so oh yeah. and when do tickets go on sale um, tickets are going to go on sale next week so I think January fifth is going to be our ticket release day this year and where can they go to buy those tickets uh, blogyouconference dot com and then the registration page cool so at least get on the mailing list which you can. Can you do that now? Is that up and running as well? Yeah, absolutely. There's links to it on the um, conference website. And I love how your your conference website actually has very simple and easy navigation yeah. and easy to find. I mean, it's crazy yeah. what some of the conferences make it so difficult. Yeah. To, I don't know if you've had that experience. Yeah, it's <laughs> oh, it's amazing. It's sometimes like I really literally, it's a hard for me to find like yeah. the schedule. And yeah. I know your schedule probably isn't set yet, but once it's set, it's it's yeah. there. It's easy. Um, but let's get back to to your to your blog. Okay. So you started it in in 2010, mm-hmm. um, and uh, you know as a means to express yourself, but also to feel less alone. Yeah. There's other people out there, new moms who are writing, um, who I can now uh, connect with, and um, you know talk about how you you know, uh, how you started to, um, you know, build that and, and what you did to f- start facilitating more, more growth. Well, actually, it's funny you say that because I did do that as a conscious decision. Um, there was a year where my husband, part of my husband's job, he's a civil engineer. And one year, part of his job was to travel around the country and inspect the guide rail at national parks. And so, Now we have three children, but at the time I had two very young children at home and um, I was by myself and he was gone for about three months and it was really difficult, but um, just like in the evenings and stuff, I was bored. And so I was like, well, what am I going to do? And I needed to do something productive. And so I made the conscious decision that I was going to do at least one thing every day for myself to try to further my blog. And I just kind of decided this is the thing that I have that is mine. And I'm going to try to take it as far as I possibly can. And so every day, I would try to do at least one thing to move it further. So sometimes that would be, I would send an email to the editor of our local newspaper and just kind of introduce myself. Some days I would send press releases to our local news stations. And I did actually get featured on the local news that way around Christmas time. They came to our house and filmed a segment with me about um, things you could make. I was doing a lot of crafts on the blog at the time. And they came to our house and filmed a segment about um, things that I could sew as Christmas presents. Um, Sometimes it would be like send guest posts to other people's blogs or to join Facebook groups or whatever. I was just trying to make sure I was doing one thing every day outside of just the normal posting on Facebook and 
whatever, but just trying to, to further my reach even further from a business perspective. So that was, you know, kind of how that happened. And eventually from that came writing for the Huffington Post and from there just kind of building these relationships even further. And I know that some bloggers right now are a little iffy on giving their work away for free. It's the way they tend to look at it right now, the syndication. But I've had a lot of success with that, actually. That's mostly where I built my audience um, through syndicated content on websites like the Huffington Post. And that's how I built pretty much, I'd say about 75% of my Facebook page came from there. And I still get a lot of referrals from there. Um, that is where I've had several posts go viral and, you know, and a lot of opportunities for media came from there as well, because almost every time I get a call from a national media outlet, it starts with the phrase, we saw you on the Huffington Post and we were wondering if you would be willing to do an appearance here, there, wherever. Um, so well, yeah, you know, it's so funny. I used to be of the mindset that that is you should not give your content for free and they're just yeah. using you and blah, blah, blah. And and which is I don't know exactly why I thought that way, because other people it well, there were people that had um, that had published in, in certain big websites like Huffington Post mm -hmm. and said, well, it didn't really do anything for me. And then there's a lot of other people who have had the exact opposite experience like yourself and uh, sort of a funny corollary example at blog you last year uh, uh quirky chrissy won um a uh or, or the huffington post chose her um piece that one of the pieces that that she uh well, the piece that she read which was yeah. very very funny um and they decided to publish it on their site after the conference and yeah. i don't know if maybe it was a month or so after or somewhere around there and then so then i saw her at another blog conference after blog you a couple months later and i was like hey how's it going and she and i have known each other for yeah. a long time and and she said you're not going to believe this just this morning and yeah. this had nothing to do with the conference just coincidentally she said uh, the, the conference we were at. She yeah. goes, I was on Sirius this morning on Jenny McCarthy's yeah. radio show. And I said, you were? And she and she said, yeah. And, and, I, and I, she goes, it was all because of the Huffington Post because yeah. I was at Blog U and I won. The, yeah. I mean, it was the craziest thing. And I said, that is so cool. And so, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it does work. So I've completely changed my perspective because I write for free anyway. Yeah. So why the, why not? You know, and, you know, it, it, it either works or it doesn't. And if it doesn't, you stop doing it, I guess. But yeah, uh, I mean, Jen Mann, you know, there's another syndicated story, uh, success story. Um, you know, she she had her Elf on the Shelf, Elf on a Shelf uh, story, and Huffing, yeah. HuffPo grabbed it along with a lot of other people. And, yeah, I think, you know, here she is today. Yeah, so. I think she went viral on her own blog mostly, but I think they did syndicate it for her as well. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's kind of what happened is last year around October – Particularly, I had one post about um, my daughter's shorts. I was doing laundry and I have mm -hmm. two girls and at the time they were five and two and I couldn't tell the difference between their shorts because they were the same size and I just kind of wrote a blog post that said, hey, what's up with this? And a lot of people resonated with that. Um, and then from there, my audience asked me to compare girls shorts to boys shorts um and target actually called me and or, yeah well they reached out through their public relations team at the time and kind of tried to explain the difference in the design and whatever and said it wasn't really fair to compare the toddlers to um the older kids and so I thought okay fine well my readers are asking me to compare boys to girls anyway I'm going to actually go to the store and do that and so I did I went back into Target and took some just some pictures on my iPhone of the girl shorts compared to the boys shorts and then that follow up post went ridiculously viral and that was the one that HuffPost named one of the most viral posts of the decade and that was the reason that you know Good Morning America and Glenn Beck and everybody was calling and it was just kind of insane for a month or two there um, I had no idea at the time that there was going to be such an interest in the topic of shorts but there really really was 
And I guess it just kind of goes to show you, you never know what's going to be the piece that takes off for you. Yeah. And, uh, but you know, I think that it, so, so that it's such a, it's such a great story and, and pretty much everyone who has a similar story where one of their posts gets a ton of attention, um, has a very similar story. They're like, well, I wrote for many years and I put my head down and I, uh, when I, when I've looked through your blog, um, I love that you have written about sensory processing disorder as well, yeah. because, uh, I, I, there is no actual way to determine it medically yet, but people who have it or parents of people that have it know that there's something definitely yeah. going on. And I had never heard of it. I've written about it. I have, I'm probably a, just, a, I'm on that whatever you might call it, if it's a spectrum mm -hmm. of sensory process or whatever it is, I've got a tinge of it for sure. And I read a book, uh, about it. There aren't many. And I read, I read one, um, which is like too loud, too bright, too fast, too tight, something like that. <laughs> and, and, and I read it and I, and I sent it at the time to my girlfriend and I was like, this sound like me? And she's like, Oh my God, this yeah. is, this is so you. And so I love that you write about that too. Cause I feel like, uh, I feel like just nobody knows what that is. So yeah, that is, I that do. is so cool. And that's a good point. I do have, um, a large portion of my audience comes to connect, um, as parents of children with special needs because our son does have some special needs. And I have written several posts about things like sensory processing disorder. Um, I also have a post called to the mamas of the special ones that did pretty well for me on the blog, but more importantly, it seemed to touch a nerve and really help a lot of moms of children who have special needs. So a large chunk of my audience comes for that reason as well. Yeah. And, you know, back real quickly to the Huffington Post thing, um, you had mentioned that, about 75% of your Facebook fans, I believe it's what you'd said, yeah. roughly come from f people finding you on places like HuffPo. Mm -hmm. And let's we should talk about those numbers because uh, you have over 20,000 likes on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I have like 3,000 and I've been doing this even longer than you. And it, it, that is a remarkably impressive number. And even if um, you know, that was all that ever happened was people clicked over and liked your stuff on Facebook from a, a, a blog like Huffington mm -hmm. Post. That's a huge, that's an almost, uh, you can't almost even quantify yeah. how, how much that helps, um, you know, to get your, your stuff in front of more people. So that's a huge, uh, accomplishment. Thank you. Um, yeah, they do. I always try to put a link at the bottom of my posts that are particularly popular. Um, but I try always if a piece is going to be syndicated to make sure that there's a link to my Facebook post somewhere. And it kind of does a call to action at the bottom, um, which has helped a lot. But even on my own blog, if there's a post that's doing very well, and I probably should do it even more often than I do, but to, um, I'm trying to focus more on Pinterest right now. But I try to always have some kind of call to action, like I'd love to connect with you further on Facebook or Pinterest or whatever the platform is that I'm focusing on at the time to get people to click over. And it does when, need to help. When I when we were yeah, when we were walking to one of the parties at Blog U last year from the dorm to a short walk at the time to the place where the party was, um, the auditorium or, or gymnasium actually. And we, I was just walking with a, somebody who I didn't know and I introduced myself and she introduced herself and she, I said, Oh, well, what do you do? And she said, Oh, I'm, um, I, I'm work for the Huffington post and I'm an editor. And I, I don't remember her name now, but, um, anyway, uh, yeah, Emma, right. And she was as nice as could be. And I said, Hey, just out of curiosity, how do people get published? I was just, just genuinely curious because mm -hmm. I, I thought I knew the answer because I've heard a million people talk about it. But I said, I said, how do you guys select what you like? You know, what, what's kind of the process? And we was only a two minute walk from the dorm to the gymnasium. And she said, Oh, it's really simple. You just, you send me an email. We're always, and she goes, we're always looking for stuff. So please. Mm -hmm. And I thought, Really, you know, and, yeah. and it was interesting because I thought she'd be like, oh, we get so much stuff. Just, oh, it's like, it, she was like, hey, if you have anything, please send it. We'd love yeah. to read, you know. And I was like, it's that easy? And she said, yeah, yeah. N probably not easy to get published. But yeah. I thought, boy, you know, that's something I, now I'm excited to publish something for, for you know, to, to sub submit something to them. And I thought, boy, that was almost worth the price of admission alone. I just spent 
a minute 30 talking to a Huffington Post person and she said, you yeah, just, just send me an email, yeah. you know? Um, and I was like, Oh, I forget how accessible things can be. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's another point to just the intimacy of our conference and the Huffington Post, um, for the past two years has given blog you our own email address for our attendees to use that they announce at our conference like where our attendees can send their things specifically. So that's been awesome as well as kind of a perk for those who attend the conference that they've been very supportive. Yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome. I'm, I'm a huge fan. Um, and, uh, let, let's, let's finish up, uh, with, with one last story sure. back to your blog. I know we're kind of all over the place, yeah. but, uh, I keep jumping back and forth, but that's okay. Um, Talking about you, this is such a funny story. Um, your your pastor who yeah. was became very supportive yeah. of your of your postings. So talk a little bit about about that. Oh, my pastor Bob, um, he's just the sweetest guy, and he is very supportive of my blog and what I do. And he's always asking me um, on Sundays if he sees me, he'll stop me and ask like, "What are you writing? What are you working on? And how's it going?" And he's always retweeting my stuff, and it's awesome. I love that he's. I love that he's on Twitter. Yeah, I love he it. is. Um, he's probably my most supportive Twitter follower. He's like retweeting my stuff even more than my mom is. Um, but he, after the conference, he followed a bunch of the blog. You, we call our attendees alumni once they go through the conference. Cause again, the whole school theme. So he's like, yeah, I followed a bunch of your blog, you alumni. And I've been following along with sassy pie hole. And she yeah, got sure. some interesting content. And so now every time like a meme comes up on my feed from her that's got adult content in it which is pretty much like her whole mo um is adult <laughs> content i'm like oh yes, well pastor bob's looking at that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know you know what i loved was at blog you you had a, a panel last year and uh nikki nepper <laughs> with, from moms who drink and swear was there and i think anna luther was also there and i is there someone there was a, some yeah, one other jill person smokler but from scary Mom. oh of course yeah and and of course <laughs> jill's jill smokler um from scary mommy and and somebody said somebody stood up and asked a very legitimate question that is asked often is hey i work in the corporate world and if i really let loose on my blog um you know there's ramifications for that and i could get in trouble and and it's you know what i loved is that your speakers because there's always a middle of the road answer. Mm-hmm. There is always like a very simple, like, well, you do what you think makes sense. And, you know, and, and it was great because Nikki Nepper sort of stood up and said, you shouldn't care what they want, you know, and, and she had a very strong opinion about screw them if they can't, you know, and that's not exactly what she said, but, but that was kind of the message was you need to, you know, and then Anna Luther, I think, stood up and said, well, no, no, well, hang on there, you know, there is, there is, we have to consider, you know, yeah. there's. You know, and and that was awesome too because that's absolutely true as well. Mm-hmm. And and then you know Jill, I'm sure you know had had an, had another opinion, but it was it was so cool. And nobody was arguing with each other, but it was cool to hear really like people were taking a position and having a real conversation about a, a question that gets asked all the time. Mm-hmm. And um and I loved I loved that because I was just hoping it wouldn't be well you know I don't know you. Should, and, and it was so cool. And people, I don't know if you remember that moment. If you, I don't know if you were in the room at that moment, because um, you have, you do about a million <laughs> things during. I during, do, but I think but I was. That was, yeah, yeah, that was a cool moment. It was pretty and, cool. And and I love that Anna Luther got up and said, "No, wait a minute." Yeah. You know, she sort of had had her own opinion, yeah. and um, so I thought that was. I just thought that was, uh, you know, so cool. And uh, I love speakers like that where they come out and actually say something. Yeah. And and I think every, your sessions, the ones I went to at least, they did. And I went up to Robin Welling um, at one of the parties and I didn't think that I knew Robin Welling at all. And I, I, couldn't, I didn't think I'd ever met her. And I said, I just wanted to tell you that I thought that was really great. And then she said, I'm so sorry. I, I, I embarrassed myself the last time we met. And I said, we didn't meet before, did we? I, I thought she was putting me on. And she said, no, I'm so embarrassed. It was two years ago. It was at a different blog conference. And I, I think I'd had too much to drink. And I was so excited to, to meet you. And I was like, I, this did not happen. I don't know what you're talking about. And it was the cutest thing because here I was going over to her to tell her how great I thought her session was. And then she was telling me, oh my gosh, two years ago, I made a fool of myself. And and I'm sure she didn't. She just has, a, you know, that she thinks she did. And I was like, I, I know you didn't do anything crazy because I don't even remember it. And um, 
and and she was just like, well, I just, you know, I thought like you were this big deal blogger. And I'm like, well, I'm, I'm not. So that's, that's the, you know, and so it was so cool that, you know, you, or you, you know, there was Jill Smokler walking around and, uh, she's obviously somebody that is, you know, um, one of those people that early on when I started blogging, people said, you need to, you should talk to her cause she's very accessible mm-hmm. and she is, she uh, at, at, at least she can be, I don't know if she always is, but, um, it's so cool that at these small conferences, you're right, those big names, and you do have big names there too, mm-hmm. um, they're just like walking around like the rest of us and they don't go into a special elevator and they don't yeah. go, you know, and they, that's sometimes not the way it is at other places. Yeah. So I love that. I love that about it. Um, and um, so uh, let's let's wrap up because I think we've gone covered a lot of ground, awesome. but we have Blog You, which starts on my birthday this oh, year, awesome. June 10th. Um, yeah, so I'll be there in whatever capacity uh, you guys allow me to be there, attendee or whatever. Oh, and let's we should say that there were, I think, four men or either three or four yeah. men last. Yeah, see, we. Yeah, and and one of them, your husband, of yeah. course. But there were a couple of us who came on there on our own. Yeah, and exponentially um, more than our first year. Our first year, Mike Cruz from Papa Does Preach was our only man on campus. <laughs> so. Yeah, and well, he came back, and uh, and and he now you you know he, I came and and uh, uh, one, at least one other yeah. uh, man came and um and you you know it's funny too because I always I love when when my, a lot of times you know most of my blogging friends are women um and they'll say oh it's so scary going to a blog conference i'm like i'm at, try it as a guy yeah. because you're, you're walking into an environment that is at, at, at like most blog conferences unless you're going to a dad conference or something yeah. they're most mostly going to be women and i always have this like i always think gosh i hope they don't think i'm here to like yeah. flirt with women or i mean that's a legitimate thought you know and i always go you know, I just like, I know it's a really safe place and I don't want to be the guy who anyone would ever say like, Oh, I know why he's, you know, and it's just like, I I get super nervous because I go, Oh, I just have to be, because I'm like pretty outgoing. And I, but at the same time, I like, I don't ever want to think anyone think I'm flirting with them or whatever. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm not, but, um, no. I would say, Hey, uh, at least you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, uh, no, but, rest assured. You were definitely not giving off a creeper vibe. No worry. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> I hope, I hope people would say yeah. I, I didn't, but, um, uh, but, uh, please, everyone should come male or female. Um, Absolutely. I'll be there. Obviously Stephanie will be there. Yeah. And if it was anything like last year, I mean, even if you don't make any friends, which you will, you'll walk out of there going, I just learned some really cool stuff. I learned, for example, um, at last, the, the most, well, I wouldn't say the most important thing I learned. That's not fair to say. But one of the best things I walked away with was an actual strategy of how to do Pinterest. Literally, how many pins to do every day, how to do my pins for myself, how to repin, um, like things that were literally actionable and not just, you know, uh, easy stuff I could read online. I literally got some Anna Luther's formula, and I don't know if she's coming back or not, but you will have other content if she's not there. It was like that in and of itself was like, oh, my God, yeah. I just learned how to actually do something really useful. Yeah, absolutely. That yeah. education is always our top priority. Yeah. Well, Everyone should go. Uh, tickets go on sale on January 5th. So go to blogyouconference.com um, and support Blog you or tell a friend. Even better, uh, do both. And also, um, they can you can follow Stephanie um, at her uh, at her blog binkiesandbriefcases.com, uh, and as well as all of her social media stuff is linked to on her website. Um, or you can just probably Google it or find it on Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest, and Instagram, and everywhere else. Um, anything else you'd like to say as we wrap up? I think we covered pretty much everything. Just I'm hoping to see a lot of new faces at Blog U this year. Yeah, and I've always said, you know, uh, I always tell people, try to figure out a way to get there. Because once you're there, um, you, you know, you're going to either make a, a friend, you're going to connect with a friend, or you're going to meet a new friend. And even if none of your blogging friends are going, yeah. the very first conference I went to, I literally did not know one, not even one person. I knew one of the speakers, uh, her name is Laura Roder, and this was a uh, a conference, and, and I didn't even get a chance to see her, and I only uh, talked to her once on, on the phone. Yeah. Uh, literally, and there were th- like 3,000 people there. I did not know one person, and um, so even if you don't know anybody, um, 
please, please go. You'll, you'll make friends and connect. Yeah. And, oh, one thing I should probably tell people is if for some reason they can't make it like your kids graduating that weekend or whatever, we are now offering one-on-one consultation services. So if you are looking for ways to like improve your traffic or update your website and you're wondering like, Hey, what are good plugins that I should be using? And you have all these questions that you would ask at a blog conference. You can now get one-on-one consultations um, with me through blog you now. So that's important as well. How, how would they do that? How do they, um, contact they can, there's a contact form on, or not a form, but just my contact information is all on my website on binkies and briefcases. So they can get to us that way or through the blog, you blog, you conference.com website. Yeah. I would like 20,000 Facebook yeah. likes. So, uh, hire Stephanie <laughs> and she will tell you how she did it. And how cool is that? So, um, uh, I'm excited to see you again the, later this summer. And um, everyone, uh, please support BlogU. Go to their uh, bloguconference.com and sign up for their uh, announcements and buy a ticket. Also, read briefcase, uh, sorry, binkiesandbriefcase.com um, and follow Stephanie. And uh, we're, again, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. Say goodbye. Bye.